Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to the Dreamy Scott Fitness Podcast Radio Show. Coming to you on this Tuesday, August the 4th, 2020. Hopefully this finds you staying safe and staying sweaty wherever you are at. And if you are in Arizona like me, you're more certainly sweaty. I can promise you that because it's not cold here uh, in August, if you guys uh, did not know that. In the desert, it gets uh, it gets to be warm. And maybe that's uh, dragging me down today. I'm a little bit tired. Uh, that or these super early ass morning workouts I'm doing with our people uh, outside and then coming in and doing my own workout after that. But it's, uh, it's wearing me down a little bit. But I wanted to drop this podcast to you guys because it came across my feed and I thought it was important because uh, I know it can, can reach a, a big audience here uh, sharing it this way. So before I jump into today's episode, a reminder, our 47-day transformation, 47daytransformation.com, is kicking off here in 11 days, 6 hours, 57 minutes. This is our flagship transformation program. We have updated a handful of things inside this bad boy, so we will rip your face off five days a week. With the training aspect of it, we coach you through all the nutrition stuff. And again, obviously, the personal development piece inside of here is probably the biggest thing on top of obviously workouts that are going to help you guys you know move better feel better and uh, look better so that is kicking off here in 11 days the program starts on august the 17th but we close registration on the 15th i think sometime around 5 p.m so we can get everybody cohorted into the group and then we can crush it for the next 47 days so if you're in a place like arizona here where you know the gyms are still not open which i assume that's going to happen here sooner than later because this is not sustainable for anybody. Uh, but if you're in a place like that or you're not gonna go to the gym and you want something that you can do from home because some things have changed in your life, maybe your kids aren't you know, going to school so you gotta be home with them or whatever it may be, this program can be done in your garage, your backyard, your living room, just a set of dumbbells and you guys can't rip it. So if you're interested, check it out. And if you want a little podcast discount code, I think we can hook that up for you guys for being diehard listeners. So again, it's 47daytransformation.com. And you got about 11 days left from today, August the 14th to, excuse me, August the 4th to register. So with that said, this podcast episode, we're going to title 95% of your fat loss comes from dot 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 and we are going to fill in the blanks here for you guys a lot of these things are if you've been listening to me for any amount of time things you probably know but we're going to break them down in a little bit different context and make them more bite sized and go into each one in enough detail where you can be dangerous and, and hopefully take this on your own and be as lean as you want to be you know obviously the phrase i share a lot of times is fat loss is easy once you realize how hard it is. Fat loss is easy once you realize how hard it is because in theory, it's simple. It's the application that makes it almost impossible for most people to do. And uh, obviously we're in America here. So in America, I, I do believe we have the fittest people, like the, the top upper echelon, the one percenters, the, 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 you know, the most gangster you know, athletes. Uh, across the board. Now, obviously, other countries have amazing athletes too, and then people who are super fit. I'm not saying that, but I believe when you look at the top, you know, one percent here, it's the fittest, the healthiest, the strongest, all those things. But now, what we also have in America is like the bottom forty percent. We also have the unhealthiest, the most obese, you know, the most health issues of all their places. So we, you know, in America, we like to win, and apparently, we win at the good stuff, and apparently, we win at the shitty stuff. So. I'm going to share with you 95% of how fat loss really works and how it comes off of your body if you choose to take these. In theory, they're simple. The application, I think you find what will be tough, consistently doing that, obviously, over time. Now, this is a playoff of an IG post from uh, Carrots and Cake on Instagram. Uh, Tina, actually, I think I met Tina originally unlike one of the first Reebok campaigns I was ever a part of. And this is before Instagram even exists. Or if Instagram exists, I think it's like, it, it had been around for like a week or so. And so, give you guys the backstory. I've been doing this for a long time, compared to uh, a lot of you listening, or since a lot of you probably just have heard of us and what we do here, maybe in the last two years or three years or five years. Uh, this is like way, way back, like probably 2010, 2011, early on. 
and uh, we did a, a lot of work with Fidfluential and Reebok and, and basically they took a bunch of bloggers. That's what we used to be. Well, I was always a fitness, you know, professional, if you will, but and our blog still exists to this day. We still update it every week. Uh, it's just the, the mediums have changed for how people consume content, but we were bloggers and Reebok brought a bunch of us on uh, to just kind of blog about the products. Here's the shoes, here's the gear, and we would kind of talk and trade best practices and do these things. And that's how I got connected with a handful of people initially in fitness who were probably outside of my normal circle. Uh, people who probably weren't in the, you know, bodybuilding kind of, you know, physique background and then sports performance, all that stuff. So uh, Tina is one of those and hers is uh, Karis and Kick on Instagram. And she put out a great post the other day. I don't know what day this was exactly, but I screenshotted it. And I thought I would uh, go into detail on it because it's a great post. It makes a lot of sense. I don't look at a lot of stuff on social media. I don't see a lot of things people share just for the fact of I kind of post my stuff and then I run away. And what I mean is I post my stuff and then I get back to work. I have real shit to do. I can't get lost in uh, comments and scrolling down the rabbit hole of stuff, you know, for hours. Although the other day I did comment back to somebody uh, who was being an asshole, which usually I just block them and restrict them, but... I was in a good mood and when I'm in a good mood, I tend to engage the trolls a little bit more. When I'm in like just a normal day or maybe having to deal with problems, I typically just block and delete. So that's how you know if you, if you got a message from me and you were talking shit, I was having a pretty good day. So anyways, I saw her post and I, and I screenshotted this stuff and I wanted to, to share it with you guys. And so the original post is just titled 95% of your fat loss results will come from and then we're gonna go down the list here. So I'm gonna list them and then we'll break each one down in detail uh, to hopefully give you some bite-sized pieces you can take with you on your fat loss journey if that is the goal. So 95% of your fat loss is gonna come from being in a calorie deficit, being in an energy deficit. The next one, making sure you're getting an adequate amount of protein every single day, at least the bare minimum. The next thing on the list would be eating veggies and fruits. Surprise, surprise, eating real food is part of fat loss. Who, who would have thought? The next one, picking up some weight, man. Lifting some heavy shit when you can. Now, obviously some of you guys are you know, without a gym, so you're gonna have to do your absolute best to make your, your body your barbell. And when I say lift heavy stuff, it doesn't mean like 700 pounds on deadlifting. Heavy, you know, in respect to what that would be for you or putting resistance on the body. For a lot of people, you know, we think of load as just the variable and that's not always the case. Now, I do think there is a place for picking up heavy stuff. Most definitely, I think there needs to be part of your life at some point. But there's a lot of damage you can do with, you know, tempo, speed, as opposed to just load and making your body weight, you know, be your barbell, as BJ Gadur would say. And next one, your daily activity. And for daily activity, you're talking like, well, Jeremy, you're talking about just workout. No, we're talking about your non-exercise activity, the thermogenesis, the, the NEAT, N-E-A-T, as us fitness pros tend to call it. But for short, it's just the non-fitness activity that you have in your life, which I'll get to in detail here in a second. The next thing, you got to get quality sleep. I've talked about before, we're doing full podcast, you have to get at least eight Lizzie's hours of sleep. If you can't get eight, do your best to get six or seven or eight or as close to it as you can. And I mean restorative sleep. Eight hours of shitty sleep I don't think does you much good, but if you can get six hours and 45 minutes of quality, legit restorative sleep, I think that's going to be a key. And then obviously stress management, trying not to stress about every single thing in the world and trying not to take on the world's problems and letting go of, of stupid stuff, which I know now is probably harder than ever just for the simple fact of there's a lot of stress in the world the you know the uh, political situation the health uh, pandemic that's going on the economical uh, situation that goes on in the world of the economy not rolling as awesome as it has for the past 10 years so again that's a side note why i say don't watch the global news and i'm saying you can be educated sure but i don't think your brain has enough bandwidth to take on the 27 horrible things that are happening around the world and then you obviously you know chew those you swallow them and then you're trying to digest the world's issues it can cause a lot of anxiety and panic and stress and so stress management is key for fat loss and then the last one which is probably the most vital of anything if you're going to put the rest of the pieces together is just consistency 
you got to consistently show up day after day after day and you got to put in the work to all of the above and it's like anything you know you if you go on vacation and you eat like shit for a week you're not going to be out of shape you know if you're a really fit person and for a week you go and just drink and eat shit and don't exercise yeah you're going to feel you know you know puffy and bloated and lethargic and, and not be as productive but you, you didn't lose all of your gains you didn't lose everything in performance you might feel like a bag of shit for three four days afterwards until your body kind of for lack of a better term detoxes from that but you don't get out of shape in a week if you're super fit and on the flip side if you are 200 pounds overweight eating perfect and working out for seven days isn't going to make you look like rambo or get you the cover of iron man or shape or whatever it may be so it's the consistent effort over time which pays the biggest dividend. So those would be the keys to fat loss. And for most people, the things that they think will help them lose fat usually aren't the things they should be spending their time doing. Like they won't help them as much as they think. And so that's why these are the posts of what will help you. And so obviously, if you want to lose fat, if you want to be leaner, if your body fat is 30%, you want it to be at 25. If you, you know, can kind of see your abs, but you really want them to pop, or if you just are 100 pounds overweight and weight loss, you know, laced with fat loss is the goal. These are the things I would write down and put into play sooner than later. And the first thing is you guys have to create an energy deficit. You have to be in a caloric deficit if you want to lose weight, if you want to lose fat. So that means you have to eat fewer calories than you burn by watching your intake and moving your ass every single day. That's why we have people track it on my fitness pal. Our 47 day transformation, we go hard on the nutrition part of it because that's why you see these people in 47 days lose 30 pounds, in 47 days lose 17 pounds, and not just lose it like bullshit water weight, like lose actual body fat. Like their body fat drops three, four, or five percent. They're changing their eating habits because they log on my fitness pal and they can see, okay, here's what I'm taking in, here's what I'm burning. Oh, I can see it moving in the right direction. So if you are not in a calorie deficit, you are not going to lose fat. That's not my opinion, that is just science. You just have to take that for what it is. So just understand. If you're burning a thousand calories a day, but you're eating 5,000, you're not going to lose fat. There's no magic supplements. There's no magic wraps or teas or pills, potions, or programs somebody can sell you. If you are eating more calories than you're burning, you're going to get bigger. If you're eating fewer calories than you burn, you're going to get smaller. It's pretty simple. I don't know if we have to go any deeper on that, but it's, it's really basic stuff. That's why I do say understanding what you're going to eat today, tomorrow, the next day, kind of having a rough idea, mapping it out, whether it be meals or macros or whatever, just understand this is how it's going to be. And then just keeping an eye on it as it kind of goes week by week by week. And it's not just weight. It's going to be how you look, how your clothes are fitting. Those are probably the biggest things. How you feel is probably the most important. And then the next thing will be how you look. And then obviously the numbers are going to shift from there. The next one, you got to eat a decent amount of protein. You got to get adequate protein in every single day. Obviously, protein for most of you guys fills you up. It helps you build muscle. It aids your muscles in recovery, and it's going to help you stay leaner overall. Because as we know, like if your muscle is your metabolism, the more lean muscle tissue you have on your body, the leaner you're going to be over time, the more you're going to burn at rest, the more efficient your body's going to be 24-7, 365. And if you don't eat enough protein, yeah, I don't think you'll be as full for long. And I think it's going to be hard for you guys to build muscle. Because building muscle is already hard as it is. Like, just losing fat, you know, is tough. But building lean tissue is even harder. And obviously, we can't do two things at once, right? So as we're on our fat loss journey and we're getting smaller, if we eat enough protein... And we're training the right way. Hopefully we can hang on to as much lean muscle tissue as possible. So keeping what lean muscle tissue is there while stripping away the fat. Now, obviously, if you're at a novice level or you're ridiculously obese, you can kind of probably 
you know, get the beginner gains and, and do some of those things like at once. But for the most part, you're just going to lose fat and you already have muscle on your body. And if you eat protein, we can keep the tissue there and become leaner and stronger and strip away the stuff that we don't want. So our muscles can actually show underneath the extra padding and layers, if you will. Next one. You gotta eat real food. And what I'm saying here is, you know, get your fruits and veggies. They're key. You know, your your mom was right, your grandma was right. You know, you gotta eat your vegetables before you get all the treats. And the benefit of your fruits and veggies, the fiber, tends to keep you fuller for longer. And obviously they're packed with micronutrients, vitamins and minerals, which are all good for you to keep you as healthy as humanly possible. Now, if you're really worried about being in that calorie deficit or self-control with fruit and things obviously you know if you go there's you know we have a whole grocery store list here of like lower carb fruits higher carb fruits lower carb veggies higher carb veggies and admittedly i struggle with eating you know six seven eight servings of fruits and veggies per day i probably do some blueberries uh you know as i'm making my athletic greens and then later in the day, I might, you know, take a half a banana and slice it up on like a, a rice cake or like some Ezekiel muffins with peanut butter or something. But for the most part, I don't eat more than probably two servings of fruit a day. Most days it's one or probably zero. The veggies I do better at and the greener the better for me. Cauliflower rice is probably a close second, but Brussels sprouts are probably the number one thing I eat and asparagus and things like that. But even for me, it's hard to get in all the micronutrients I need. That's like why I do take an athletic greens every single day because it's gonna cover my bases. It's not the antioxidant equivalent of 10 to 12 servings of, of fruits and veggies. So if you guys are interested, hit me up. I'll send you a link for 20 for travel packs of athletic greens. But on top of that, be eating as many vegetables as you can. I just know when things are tough, it's hard to do. And so if you really wanna be healthy, it makes sure you're getting the body enough vitamins, minerals, and micronutrients so it can be as efficient as it can, supplementing with the greens I think is ideal, but if you can eat them, eat them for sure. I just know a lot of people struggle with it. And there's people listening, oh, Jeremy, I always do it. I'm like, no, you don't. You do not eat 10 servings of fruits and veggies, 365, unless you probably are like a fruitarian or vegetarian or something. And then those guys typically tend to lack in the protein. So my point is, is just, and again, I don't care about people's eating styles. You do what makes you feel best, but it's just really hard to do, to get everything in by just doing whole food. That's why supplements exist. We live in this amazing era of time in life where you can actually take advantage of that, where 100 years ago, you couldn't. You just you did the best you could with what you had. So we are in a great position here. But the key is obviously getting in enough fruits and veggies every single day, I think is gonna help you guys because the micronutrients do matter, um, right by the macronutrients. The next one, you gotta lift some weights, you gotta pick up some stuff. And it doesn't gotta be just a barbell. We get so confused. It can be a sandbag. It can be dumbbells. It can be medicine balls. It can be pushing a sled. It can be wearing a weight vest. There's a million ways that we can load the body up. And when I say like lift heavy, we're talking like lift heavy for you as an individual, not your buddy down the street, not what you saw on Instagram. Lifting heavy for you is the key. Because obviously as we know, lifting weights burns more calories for longer periods of time than just aerobic work and it boosts your metabolism on top of that as we shared before if your muscle is your metabolism the more lean tissue you can have in your body the better and so even if it's not if you don't have access to loads right now because you're like locked at home everybody bought the dumbbells because they're a bunch of assholes and you're stuck there when you're building your programs when you're part of something Throw in the body weight movements that are going to put some resistance on the body. I know it's not the same thing as like, you know, picking up 300 pounds off the ground, but it's better than just running. And again, I'm not against running. I think it's, it's a natural movement. I think all of us are meant to do it in some capacity. Some of us shorter uh, than others in terms of length. But when you're building a program, if you're like, hey, I'm going to run 100 yards, you know, on a football field. So I'll run 100 yards, I'll walk it back. Throw in push-ups. Throw in body weight squats, throw in lunges, throw in some burpees, throw in some dips. Like, put some body weight resistance on some of those things too. I think that's going to help you guys because that way it's, you're giving some stimulus to the muscles and not just, you know, doing aerobic work. We can make it metabolic by just adding in some variations and messing with times and reps and sets, I think, is all ideal too. But if you have access to a kettlebell, 
sandbag, dumbbells, barbells, obviously use them and build them into a program that makes sense for you guys and don't just rely on cardio. I know a lot of people think that cardio just, you know, burns fat. I'm like, any activity that's burning calories, you guys, is going to help you burn fat, you know, as long as you're not eating and drinking like a complete idiot. But I do think there's something to be said about throwing some of those interval based things into your aerobic work and a lot of people just get married to i'm just gonna run i'm just gonna walk and that stuff's great and it has its place but just you throwing in some of the very basic patterns if you can do pull-ups obviously push-ups and the lunges and those things like it's going to work the bigger muscle groups and it's going to give you a bigger bang for your buck and it's going to burn more calories for a longer period of time than just the sole aerobic work by itself Next one on the list, we are talking your daily activity. This is one that people don't pay enough attention to. And this is again, the non-exercise activity, the thermogenesis, N-E-A-T. You're neat, if you will. So for the sake of this, we'll call it non-exercise activity. And when you're like, what the hell does that mean? It's the little things that you don't think matter. Now, I actually, now that I think about it, I have this, I've got, Monica's like, you should go into those little smartwatches because I was just wondering about like the steps. So if you can see on YouTube right now, if you're watching me, this fancy watch, cost me 29 bucks, boom, I'm thrifty. So it's a smartwatch, cost me 29 bucks, it syncs up to my phone. Um, I've got a bunch of these sent to me from like Polar and other brands, and I'm sure I could have reached out to somebody and they could have sent me an expensive one if I talked about it on the podcast, but I chose not to. So I don't even know the brand of this one, but the point is, is I did it just to track my steps. Cause I was like, I saw something where it recommends that Americans get like 7,000 steps per day. And I thought that was pretty low. And I thought that was kind of horseshit. But again, then I remembered most Americans are super lazy and don't do anything. So I guess that is probably aggressive. And so I have this on and it's, I've been awake since four something this morning, um, about 4 a.m. I didn't really start moving around a lot till about five-ish. And right now it's just 1224 in the afternoon. And all I've been doing is here just doing work and walking around, just kind of cleaning stuff here and setting up things. And if I look at my steps for today, which again, I have not worked out yet. I've done nothing really physical other than basic mobility. I have taken 7,918 steps so far. And I've done nothing, in my opinion. Now, obviously, if you would watch my day, like, oh, he's walking around a little bit. He's taking... I really haven't walked many places. I walked in to get a coffee, walked in to get some blood drawn, walked around here to turn on the TV, move a ski around, and some really, really basic things. But the point is I've taken almost 8,000 steps today. That, my friends, would be part of your non-exercise activity. It's the things that just kind of add up throughout the day. So for you, if it's parking further from the entrance of the grocery store, or your doctor's office, or your kid's sporting events, or if you're going back to work and you're back to the office, take the stairs, or if you can walk up and down the bleacher stairs if your kid's at like a baseball practice or something. Maybe for some of you, it's getting a standing desk. Um, these things, obviously, they take extra calories, you know, to do. It's really simple stuff, but it, but it adds up and it helps create a bigger deficit for you if fat loss is really the goal. And it's all the things you don't think, like you just volunteering to go take out the trash for your husband or wife, you know, anything that's movement, it matters. Walking your dog, just going on a walk. If you're listening to a podcast, as opposed to just sitting on your ass, when you're on a phone call, like a lot of times now I do my phone calls with my uh, AirPods in, like the other day I've been, well, I've been talking to my old man more uh, the last probably a uh, couple weeks here just because we've got some shit going on. And uh, it's nice, first of all, but when I talk to them, I usually have my AirPods in and I just walk around. And so if we talk for 22 minutes or, or 55 minutes, I find myself just kind of pacing in the gym here, back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And I might walk outside a little bit and I come back inside, even though it's hot as balls here. But I'm just going all of a sudden, it's like, wow, I took 2000 steps talking to my old man for, you know, 25 minutes. So that's what I mean by that non-fitness activity. The things that you don't think matter compound and add up over time. So that's why I think like one of these little cheap ass smart watches or like a pedometer or something is nice if it prompts you to set a step goal every single day. I think most people 10,000 steps should be probably the bare minimum. 
But if this is on there and you find yourself at home being a lazy ass, skipping your workout and like, well, I still got 2000 more steps to go. You, you might be more inclined to get up and just walk or do something. And I think that's a great time where you can listen to a podcast or music or just be mindful or go ride your bicycle or th the things that again, when fitness is not supposed to be like the goal of the activity, it's just, it's just the outcome of it. And we asked that before a million times, like when you're just like, you know, obviously if you're playing ball with your kids, you know it's exercise, but you're probably there just to teach them and you're having fun and then you might get lost in it if you're competitive. And But you start to just burn calories just by moving your body as opposed to just sitting on your ass. And I thought about that too. I'm like, if you're a normal person, even if you just went to lift and like work out, you might work out for 45 minutes and then you're done for the rest of the day. You might only took 4,000 steps because you literally didn't move off your ass from like your office chair or anything else. And so that's why I think just getting up, you know, maybe once an hour, or once every 90 minutes or two hours just to go for a walk for five minutes is gonna add up like crazy. It's why if you guys watch my Instagram stories, a lot of times you'll see me doing email and DM returns on the air runner or on the assault bike. So I don't just wanna sit here. Cause when we do obviously like an Instagram post, some of the ones, they might take 15 minutes by the time we chop the videos, splice them together, write the captions, proofread it. Cause I'm an idiot and I write everything, you know, incorrect all the time. So I don't want to look like a complete dumbass, but the point is it takes like 15 minutes. So instead of me just sitting on my butt for 15 minutes, I'll get up on the air runner here or hop on the assault bike and I'll pedal. And it's like, okay, I might've only burned 77 calories or something, or I might've only burned 33 calories in the 15 minutes, but at least I did something. At least I was moving my body around. And that's what I'm talking about. Those things you don't think matter, they do. So don't blow them off as like, Ah, that's not gonna help me get fit. No, anytime you can move the body, it's gonna help you create a bigger deficit. And it'll help you guys get leaner quicker and help you stay leaner for the long term. Next one, sleep, which I could use right now. I'm drinking a coffee and I'm still just a smoke show. But uh, you gotta sleep more, you really do. You try to get eight hours every night, if possible. And try to take naps when you need them or if you're a napping person, if you can. And I just, again, we have a full podcast on sleep, but proper sleep helps regulate your hormones, which keeps the system running. It helps build your immunity up. It helps the body repair. It just, it codes memory. It does everything. Sleeping is like, it's like, I imagine like these little workers, you know, kind of come out. This is how my brain works. These little workers kind of come out and then they repair you. They're like repairing your muscles, they're repairing your gut, they're helping your brain. Like they're doing everything while you sleep and without that you don't get the repair that you need to be able to function. And again, obviously when your hormones are out of whack, you're hungrier, uh, you know, you're more irritated, you're pissed. My wife on lack of sleep is, she's like a different human. She's not a pleasant person to be around. So I think we can all tell like when you're, like when a baby is, is super tired, they cry. We do that as adults, we just manifest it by being an asshole or lazy or cutting corners or just being you know, kind of out of it, having a brain fog, if you will. And I think what you'll find is if you're not sleeping enough, it's going to be really hard for you guys to get lean. And so I might even go take a nap today if I can. And I'll say this, I was guilty of this for a long time, not getting enough quality or sort of sleep. I've gotten way better in the last probably year or so. Now, obviously this season of life has a uh, has helped and hurt. So sometimes I'd wake up and be like, what the fuck? When is this going to be over? Uh, I don't do that as much, although I do wake up every day and I'm like, are we still doing this bullshit? But uh, I do find I've made my routine more concrete of when I go to sleep. I kind of put some hard stops on it and I put my phone in the bathroom and then I come in and I just like turn on like a sports game or something or like the office and I just kind of zone out for a couple minutes and then I'm out and I try to do that relatively early. So I've been going to sleep earlier. I'm still waking up at the ass crack of dawn, but I do find I feel better and uh, I can get more done and I'm a little bit sharper overall. So I do find that uh, does help even for me. So I was guilty of it and I've been working on it just like you guys. And then the next one on the list is manage your stress. Now, again, I mentioned this before, this is arguably one of the most stressful seasons of life for a lot of you, whether it be all the aforementioned things before or just the uncertainty of knowing you know, what direction you're gonna go with your career 
or your kids going back to school or, you know, uh, your, the health of, of everything or who knows what your individual worry is, but there's a lot of stress circling the planet right now, America for sure, but all other places. And I think you have to manage that the best you can. You have to put yourself in a mental space to be successful and you can't take on the world's problems. You can't overlize, excuse me, overanalyze everything. And you can't always think it's gonna be the worst case scenario all the time. Now you obviously can't be overly optimistic and have your head up your ass thinking, you know, tomorrow you're gonna wake up and the world will go back to how it was, you know, in February. But you can be a realist. And you can look at things glass half full as opposed to glass half empty. And in your individual life, you have to learn to say no to things that do not serve you. You have to learn how to delegate, you know, tasks when you can. And if you're talking training, you got to avoid overtraining. You have to take the, the breaks. You have to be on a program that makes sense. Rest when you have to rest. Work when you have to work. Uh, if you're a person who prays or if you're a person who, you know, meditates, you know, whatever you have to do to put yourself in a good headspace, do that. And again, do everything you possibly can to keep your stress levels in check. Whether that's not watching the news or, you know, watching a funny comedy, something that's light and not super heavy. Uh, surrounding yourself with good people, not getting into debates on the internet about people's political stances or what they think about this or conspiracy theories and all the horse shit that I see people do every single day. It doesn't change anything. You getting on the internet and having an opposing stance to somebody else is like one of the lowest forms of communication. It's utterly fucking ridiculous. I watch people do this on Twitter and Facebook and they have full blown arguments in the comment section. It's like, you're not gonna change their mind. They're not gonna change yours. And who gives a shit? It's the most impersonal thing. People have gotten so comfortable saying stuff online because they have not got punched in the face for it enough. And I'm sorry if that offends anybody, but like, if you knew you were saying things to certain people, they could just come up and just crack you in the mouth. Like you would not say half this bullshit people are sharing. <sighs> End rant. But my point is, is that you can't engage in that stuff. There's no point. Like do what I do, post and run away and go fill your head full of positive things that, that put you in a good mood or just whatever you need to do to manage stress. For me, I don't watch the news. I watch nothing. If something's gonna happen, my wife's gonna tell me Monica's going to tell me, or it, it'll be on every single platform so much, I'll, it'll be impossible for me to avoid it. But short of that, I don't watch the news. I feel a thousand times better. Uh, I don't watch depressing things. We've been watching uh, Cold Case Files on Netflix. It's sad. They do solve the murders. But it is kind of sad, but it doesn't, it doesn't make me feel sad because there's like some resolution, even though some of the stories are pretty are pretty rough, but I don't watch them right before I go to sleep. If we watch one, then I'll have to turn on like The Office or Parks and Recs or like The Hangover and I laugh and I'm in a better mood. So I'll do that. I always exercise, I have to. I have my own process for how I decompress. Sometimes I, most mornings I drive here and there's nothing. I don't put a podcast on nothing because my radio in my car doesn't work. <sighs> 2008 Honda Accord, shout out. So I'll drive here and I have nothing on it. Just, it's just silence, I roll the windows down, it's a coolish breeze, I would put it. But uh, I just kind of just drive and I'm just like, I just think about almost nothing. My, my head is just blank, which is, it's nice. And uh, then later in the day, I'll train here, I'll go home. I might uh, go in our pool. I might put on a podcast, whether it's just easy listening, something that's random, like if it's you know, Rogan's shit or like Ramsey or, or Hogan or somebody. And just something where it's like, I'm paying attention to it, but not really. It's just, you know, background talking. And I was in my pool, just hanging out, just enjoying the sunshine. And I go home and pet my dog. And I just, I do things that help me not be stressed about the current situation that most of us are in and that I sit in. You know, I, I run a, a big part of our business was, you know, a brick and mortar gym that basically has been closed for like four months. And all you do is lose money. You know, all you do is lose uh, athletes and clients and you have no chance to get more because you're not even open. So imagine you're in a business where you wake up every day and people have to cancel or pause or quit or something and you're doing your absolute best to help them but you're just kind of fucked. Like that's the world I've been living in since uh, March and it's not super fun. And if I just sat and did that and tried to weather the storm, it would cripple me with stress, anxiety and panic. But I'm like, 
I do the best I can with the people I got and I'll just go all in on all our other, you know, business ventures. And that's all I can do right now for this season of life. And knowing that, you know, I have peace with it. And then knowing I do all the other things around it to manage the stress helps me, you know, that's all any of us can do. And so I don't know what you have to do personally. Mine are, are probably pretty simplistic, but I know I have to exercise. You know, I know I have to pet my dog. I know I have to probably, you know, jump in my pool. I know I have to watch things that, you know, give me a chuckle or a laugh or just like easy, lighthearted watching that's not gonna, you know, stick with me and make me feel, you know, a depressed, you know, certain kind of way. And so you do what works for you, but managing your stress is a huge key to you guys being lean. Not just for the short term, but for the long term. And the last one, being consistent because none of the shit we just mentioned before is going to mean anything if you can't consistently do it it's not what we do some of the time that matters the most it's what we do most of the time that matters the most it's like every other skill being lean and being super fit is a skill Managing how you eat, how you sleep, how you train, how you live your life is a skill. And it's one of the hardest skills out there because it's not like something you can do and just pick it back up and it comes right back to you. It doesn't work that way. And it has to be done consistently. It's like you can't, if you suck at golf, you can't play golf once a month and then think you're going to get good at golf. It just doesn't work that way. You can't suck at golf and even just, you know, go play golf once a week. And become really amazing, I don't think. You have to put some time into it. At the range, at the putting green, getting some lessons, playing actual live rounds. It's with anything. You know, you just can't do something so sporadically and think you'll be amazing at it. There has to be consistency with it. And with this stuff, it's pretty much got to be every single day. I'm not saying you got to be perfect every day and have, you know, die hard workouts every single day. I'm not saying that. But you do have to be consistent with your efforts overall every single day. So consistently you have to eat real food. And you, you do the percentage how you want to, 90, 10, 80, 20, whatever it may be, but consistently you have to eat well. And consistently you have to exercise. You gotta get up and move your ass, man. You gotta train. Some days it's gonna be hard, some days it's gonna be going for a walk, but you have to consistently move your body through space. You have to consistently drink water. You have to stay hydrated. You have to consistently not drink a shit ton of alcohol and not eat a ton of processed foods and not do a bunch of drugs and not just lay in your ass and not just procrastinate and make up excuses why you can't do something. So consistently you have to eat well, you have to exercise, you got to get quality sleep, you got to stay hydrated and you got to fill your body with the things that are going to make it look, move and feel the way that you want to. And you have to wash, rinse and repeat that shit day after day after day after day. That's all there is to it. Like, if you know another way, create a podcast, create a program, I'll listen to it. I'll be happy to buy it and do it, and I'll see if it works. But this is the one thing you can't cheat. You can't really microwave it. It's a crackpot meal. No matter how fast you want to have it, it just doesn't happen quickly. And consistency is the key or the queen, however you want to phrase it, but that's the truth. And so... So what I said at the beginning, losing fat, fat loss is easy once you realize how hard it is. And once you realize all the pieces you have to put into play consistently to make it happen, you realize it's tough. That's why you don't see that many people who are super, super fit because it's not easy to do, but it's something everybody can do if they're willing to put in the work. Now, how lean you get and ripped or how you look that's you know age range training that's time that's genetics that's consistency that's hormones there's a lot of things that go into play there but anybody can be fit if they choose to be and losing fat building muscle you know being fit being healthy the right way is really hard but that's the only way that's really sustainable long term and why would you want something that's only there for a brief moment that's really fleeting and then you just go back to your old shitty habits, rituals, and routines? I wouldn't, you know, because 
you know, following, you know, the cheap gimmicky shit, the, you know, get lean fast, the, the fad diets that, uh, that don't actually work. It's hard too, but, uh, you get to pick which hard you want. Like we see all the time, you can pick the hard of, you know, putting in the work, effort, energy up front. Um, that's going to take longer and, uh, it'll pay off in the long term. or you can try to shortcut it and do the crash dieting bullshit stuff and, uh, lose 12 pounds in a week and then have it all come back and then some on top of the, you know, probably the, you know, internal or metabolic damage or whatever you're going to do to your body just to get there. So again, at first, just focus on a couple things. If you can't do all at once, just focus on one. Just focus on getting better sleep and focus on walking every day. And then, you know, you build all the stuff on there just to see like what, you know, what it looks like, what it feels like, what it's worth to you to really do it, right? Like how much effort are you willing to put in? And how lean do you want to be? And that's an individual decision that each one of us have to make. Like, okay, I'm willing to do this to get that. And like I say all the time, sometimes, you know, the juice, you know, isn't worth the squeeze. And for some of you it is, and for some of you it isn't. But I know for everybody what's worth it is eating better food, staying hydrated, getting quality sleep, and moving your body a little bit every single day. Regardless of what you're going to look like, all those things are going to, I believe, extend your life. And even if they didn't, make you live one day longer, it will enhance the quality of your life that you're living every single day. And to me, the quality of something is what it's all about. Because if you don't like the body you're sitting in, if you don't like the way you feel, if you don't like the way you look, if you don't like the way you move, what the fuck are we even doing here? Like, what a miserable existence. Like, I don't want to live in a world where I hate the way that I move and feel. It just doesn't seem fun. If I'm in control of that, that would be something I would invest my time, effort, energy into. And so that is my takeaway for you guys. So the question is, you know, what, what fat loss strategies are you guys willing to commit to this week of the above mentioned? If we've established that 95% of the fat loss comes from being in a calorie deficit, getting enough protein, eating more fruits and veggies, lifting heavy ass weights when you can, increasing your daily non-exercise activity, getting better sleep, managing the stressful world of shit we're living in, and consistently doing that over time. So if you can do them all, great. If you can only, if you're doing a couple already, badass. If you want to increase and add one or two in, I think sky's the limit for you guys. So again, is that anything super sexy? No. Is there anything you didn't know? Probably not. But those are the fastest, most efficient ways to do it, and that is where a majority of fat loss is gonna come from these things. We could throw in some random stuff in there as well, and we can make this list, you know, 47 items long, but I think this is a pretty good synopsis of what it takes to lose fat and be leaner, and stay leaner, which is it was the biggest key. You know, if it's not sustainable, it's, uh, it's not attainable. That's why I like to teach lifestyle here. We don't teach you know, gimmicky shit and quick stuff. I'm all for trying things for sure, but I'm not gonna sell you guys some horse shit. I'm gonna do the things that are probably a little bit more work, the things that are probably a little bit more painful up front, but that's the only way that I know how it to be done. Maybe because I was never great at anything and I had to work my ass off to get good at anything, I just accept it for what it is. But uh, you know, as the saying is, easy come, easy go. And so when you have to work for something, you really appreciate it and you really earn it. And that's why I think, you know, sometimes you meet someone who is a little bit fitter and a little bit leaner and a little bit healthier and a little bit stronger. And they almost have like this internal swagger to them, which you might notice on the outside, but it's because they've, they put the time in, they put the effort in, they've done things that other people won't do. They've woke up when they're a little bit tired and they've trained, you know, they squeezed in a workout, they skipped a happy hour, they ate a little bit better food. They manage their stress a little bit different. They, they put, this process and the system into play that's allowed them to be this individual that very few humans will ever do. So again, all these things are super easy in theory, but the application is where it gets tough. So you have to ask yourself, what am I willing to put in to get the results? Knowing it's these simple things, what am I willing to commit to consistently over time to get there? And only you guys can answer that. So. 
anything else you want to hear on the podcast, shoot me a message, send me a DM. I'm happy to record it if I can speak on it with any intelligence whatsoever. I will do it. And a reminder, our 47-day transformation is kicking off here in 11 days, 6 hours, 13 minutes, and 14 seconds as of right now. So if you guys are interested in joining me for that, it's 100% done online from your living room, backyard, garage, wherever it is. We will melt your face off, help you eat a little bit healthier, and if fat loss is your goal, we will add all these things into that program to help you get there and hold you accountable and coach you every step of the way and beyond. So if you want to do that, 47daytransformation.com. Link is in my Instagram bio as well. And if you want a little podcast discount code, shoot me a DM or an email. I'll do my best to get back to you and get that going for everybody. And if you find yourself on iTunes right now, if you have an iPhone or iPad or a MacBook, stop. Don't be a lazy ass. Go on your phone to your podcast app. Scroll your finger all the way down on the Jeremy Skippins podcast. Hit five star. Leave me a comment or two. I truly would appreciate it. The same thing if you are on that MacBook or the iPad, just go to your iTunes and click ratings and reviews under Jeremy Scott Fitness. Leave me your thoughts. I'd appreciate it. And obviously sharing with us with a friend or family member selfishly helps us. And I appreciate you guys for that. So uh, I'm probably going to pop back on later in the week with a couple episodes. So again, if you need something, just holler at me. And you guys have an amazing rest of your Tuesday. So appreciate you. And uh, until next time. Eat well, train hard, be nice to people, and please, you guys, keep doing shit you love with people you enjoy because your life is too short not to. I'll talk to you soon. Peace.